All right, so pain onset provocation, just an extension of what I just said. But I think one thing that's important to say is pain provocation is actually a very reliable method for assessing movement dysfunction. So like compare, if I come, somebody comes out with an x-ray MRI versus me being able to figure out in that session what provokes their pain, it's so much more valuable to figure out what provokes their pain than, than knowing anything about their structural diagnosis. Um, so that, that's, as we find the pain, we can then categorize it into the type of movement that brings it on. So mobility-based pain would be generally pain that's felt towards an end range of movement. So I'll just use a shoulder because it's easy. So if I get to the end of my, what would be perceived as a normal shoulder range of motion, that's where it hurts, but none of this hurts until I get here. And as soon as I take it away, it goes away. It's pretty consistent. We look at that as mobility-based pain. Sometimes we need to, oftentimes we might need to go into that a little bit in a non-threatening way to try to make change over time. And it's certainly not in one session, but it's over time. We also may want to change position elsewhere to see if, you know, if I change the position of my pelvis or my, my core, does it actually make me move with, you know, more range of motion, less pain. Bottom line is we might, we may be trying to make changes to tissue over time by gradually, you know, just getting the body into a non-threatening stress. So it allows the tissue to kind of come back stronger, tolerate more pain through stress. We can also look at that coupled with neurological adaptation. A consistent, gradual, progressive provocation of a non-threatening symptom allows the nervous system to tolerate more activity before it is recognized as painful. Bottom line, we're trying to be able to move farther before the onset of pain in these presentations.